do a demonstration of using the async HTTP and JSON. So, looking at the roads page here, we will find our async HTTP example. Let's go back to our roads page. So using async HTTP is basically it allows you to make HTTP calls directly from your application to a web service or any other URL. So we'll go ahead and implement uh, async HTTP controller. So we have a get method here. So we'll take a look at our get, we'll put this in our controller. Go to our product controller here. We'll add a method async HTTP. We'll put this here. So you can see here's where we define our callback for async HTTP because it will display automatically. So we'll have uh, HTTP get callback method. So what happens is when async HTTP is run, it runs in the background, and when the page is loaded, it then calls your callback method. So we'll say we'll just have it load the Google page. We don't need to provide any extra headers. And then we'll say redirect action view HTTP. We will call, we will have this, we'll say result equals. We'll take a look at our roads page again. It says here is what our callback has. It says the params contains the response. So we'll have the params body. So we'll go back to our text main here and say web view. We're going to create this view HTTP view here. So we'll just call this new file view HTTP.erb. In this, we'll put some defaults here. So we'll copy from this page. We'll give it a new title. And inside our content, we will have our HTTP view here. So let's see, we called it HTTP result. So 
So the flow of this is that when we hit the async HTTP link, it will set the async HTTP in the background, redirects us to our view HTTP view. Since HTTP result will be blank, it will render nothing, and you'll get a blank page. When, ASIC, when the HTTP call has been completed, it will call the callback, which then sets that to our body and refreshes our view. So when the callback is finished, our view would display, uh, our view will display whatever that HTTP code is. So we still need to make a link here to our async HTTP. So we'll go to our index page and we'll just add a new link here. Save that. Let me go back here and create one iPhone. Go back to our application. We have our view HP link. So you can see it showed us the blank page connected out to Google and then displayed us the results here. So I'm gonna take a minute here to answer some questions. So the next step, which a lot of people like to do, is parse JSON directly on the device instead of going through all of the sync server and all that. So you can make the HTTP call directly with async HTTP and display that on the device. So we'll go through that now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open up a JSON feed here. So we'll say uh, rowstore.heroku.com products.json. So this is going to be our JSON feed. So you can see this has several product listings here. So we'll go back to our application and go back to our controller here. We'll have it get from our JSON feed. And in our callback, we'll just do a body.inspect and save that. So when we relaunch our application, We can see here we ha now have the hash of hashes displayed. So the real neat trick about here is if you're using async HTTP pulling from a JSON feed, it automatically parses the JSON for you. You don't need to do any extra parsing or anything. We now have our JSON object. So for example, we can do, uh, let's see here, look at our data format here. It has a product, product. So we can go back here and do
zero, then we'll just look at the first one and inspect that one as well. So if we save that, run it again, Now we show just our first product. I'm take some time to answer a few more questions. Another question here is, how would we integrate this call with our model? So that is actually a very good question. Uh, we'll take a look at our controller here. So what we would do is take a look at our HTTP GET callback. So what this is giving us is an array of products. So what we'll do is we'll do params body dot each product. Create a new product here. And then if we look at our iPhone simulator here, we'll go back and take a look at what a product looks like. Go back to our home page. We see a product is really just another hash. This is product and then it has the name brand so we'll say this here uh, my product dot name product product here name let's take a look back and see what our other properties are we have name, brand, price. So let's name brand. Change this to brand. Price. Then we'll have my product dot save. So what this is going to do is take our JSON feed and parse it and then store new products in our database. So we'll go ahead and relaunch our application. to our store here. Oh, so the uh, iPhone simulator has crashed. So let's try this again. Sometimes the iPhone simulator will crash like that. You just need to relaunch the application. So we did the same display. So what we should see now though, however, is if we go to our products, 
it has taken all of the products and from our JSON feed and stored them with the name, brand, and price in our database, parsing the JSON feed directly. We'll take another minute here and answer some more questions. So there is, do you have a mass assigned feature when called product.new like Rails? So if we take a look at our create method, the answer is yes, we do have the mass assigned feature here, just as in Rails. And that you get by default when you do the default generation.